when rain falls is part of a cycle that's essential to all life on Earth. Every phase of this cycle plays a role in keeping the planet beautiful and vibrant. Water makes its way back into the atmosphere via many different routes. Through rivers, from the leaves of plants, and even through the human body. And what keeps all these processes turning are wetlands. There are many types of wetland. Inland wetlands, coastal wetlands, and human-made wetlands. Wetlands are extremely important for humans. They are hugely diverse ecosystems, providing natural riches like food, timber and medicines. Nearly three billion people are dependent on groundwater for drinking. And agriculture relies on wetland freshwater for irrigation. Wetlands are nature's way of purifying water. They also play a hugely important role in the regulation of climate change by storing carbon. Coral reefs, mangroves, tidal flats and other coastal wetlands provide a buffer between the land and the sea, preventing flooding and erosion. Despite all of these benefits, wetlands are often thought to be of low value, and half of the world's wetlands have already been destroyed. consequences of further destruction are flooding, drought, disease and pollution, and climate change. And ultimately mass starvation and unprecedented species loss. But there is hope. The Ramsar Convention protects wetlands by helping people work together to manage these most precious of resources. Work is focused on wise use of water, building a network of wetlands of international importance and international cooperation. From local projects to global policy making, Ramsar aims to get the world acting as one before it's too late. We all depend on water. Each of us can make a difference. We all have a responsibility in protecting wetlands. Good afternoon everyone, welcome to SCPW's Wetland News, Wetland Views, a quarterly online show that will showcase new developments in wetlands conservation. We will share with you knowledge, meaning skills, tools, information, or know-how about wetlands. I am Darichelle Estorba, your host for this afternoon's event. 
The show's format has two segments. First, we have invited guests to talk about selected topic or feature for the episode in Wetland News. And second, by featuring some videos about wetlands through Wetland View. Later on, we will show you two video clips about two of the most visited wetland centers in Asia, the Sungai Bulo Wetland Reserve and Hong Kong Wetland Park in our Wetland View segment. So consequently, for now in our past uh, Wetland View segment, we talk about uh, the Project Next Cities and the SCPW Wetland School Project. For this episode, we will have a discussion about the, the upcoming Wally So now, uh, let me briefly introduce our guests for today. We have Ms. Amy Lixones, the Executive Director and Vice President of the Society for the Conservation of Philippine Wetlands. We also have Mr. Chris Rostron, the Head of Wetland Link International and of the Wetland, Wetlands and Wildlife Trust in London, UK. We also have Mr. Ms. Songbo Kim, the network officer of the Ramsar Regional Center East Asia, and also Ms. Elaine Marie Miranda, the OIC Protected Area Superintendent of the Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park. So for today's discussion, if you have some comments and questions, you can input it in our live stream in the comment section of our Facebook and YouTube channel. And later on, we will accommodate some of questions in our open forum. So for now, let us have our first speaker, Ms. Amy Lexiones, to talk about the 8th Wetland Link International or Welly Asia Conference. Ms. Amy, please have the floor. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, good morning, a special good morning to our colleagues from UK who had to wake up early to join us today. So I am very pleased to announce that the Society for the Conservation of Philippine Wetlands is hosting the 8th Wetlands Link International Asia Conference with its co-organizers, the WWT and Wetlands Link International, Welly Asia to the Ramsa Regional Center, East Asia. Let me share with you uh, some information about about the about the um, conference um okay i'm i'm having problems with sharing just a minute okay hmm how come i can't find my PowerPoint. Okay, so um, the conference will actually have uh, uh, the, the overall theme of the conference is healing with nature, wetlands and wetlands centers in focus. It aims to highlight the benefits of wetland ecosystems in human health and the role of wetland centers in promoting health and well-being of people. The conference will be conducted in two parts. Part one would be the Wetland Center Festival, and this will be conducted on 24 to 26 November of this year, while part two will be conducted sometime uh, first quarter of next year. We're hoping we could have it in March or early April next year. Okay, the objectives um, of the conference, let me just try to see if I can already share my screen. I'm having a trouble sharing my PowerPoint. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can't share. Uh, this is really... Well, okay. 
Okay, so let me just uh, read to you the objectives of the conference. So uh, the Welly Conference is uh, aims to share information among wetland center managers and relevant stakeholders and facilitate interaction among members to discussion on specific themes on wetland operation and management and explore opportunities for future cooperation among the members. Okay. So uh, we have three sub-sessions. The first one is um, Healing with Nature. This is a panel discussion format and deals with how human well-being and nature are connected and how wetland centers may contribute to this experience. Uh, the second uh, subsession is on Wetland Center Festival. The Wetland the, uh, the Welly Asia members are given uh, the opportunity to give updates and showcase um, current activities in their wetland centers, employing various creative ways of presenting uh, presenting their presentation, it, which could be in PowerPoint, video, dance, product presentation, or any creative format within the prescribed allocation of 10 minutes. We already encourage all members to submit presentations, and right now we already have, I think, 16 who registered for this presentation. Uh, for subsession three, it's the moving forward segment. And this is to generate and exchange ideas on how to move forward and identify and strengthen areas for collaboration through a group workshop and also the business meeting with the Valley Asia Network. And possible agenda item would be the conduct of part two of the Valley Asia Conference next year. Just a minute. Next year in 2022. Okay, so uh, the program for the Wetland Center Asia um, Wetland Center Festival in on 24 November 2021. Uh, let me let me see again if I can already try sharing it. I'm really having a problem on sharing the screen. Um, it's not appearing on my share screen. Um, okay. All right. So. Let me just, I will just talk about it then. Okay, so. It is open. Okay, so. I got it figured out. Okay. So, um, so this is the program, provisional program for the uh, session in November. So day one, uh, we will only have uh, three hours a day for three days. So day one would be a panel discussion on healing with nature. As our main speaker for this session is Dr. Gideon Lasco. He is a medical anthropologist who has a lot of experience and uh, work on uh, healing with nature. He is with the Univers University of the Philippines Department of Anthropology. Okay, for day two, um, we also start at 2 p.m. and our, uh, our uh, main speaker for that day is from Diasaru Park, Sri Lanka. Um, the, the, the panel discussion will be on wetlands and wetland centers for nature and human well-being. Our uh, speaker for main speaker for this day is the officer in charge of the Diasaru Park, Ms. Ranoshi Siripala. Um, this uh, wetland, the Diasaru Park, is really a very interesting wetland because it is actually an artificial or human-made wetland that now hosts more than 200 species of animals, including 80 species, species of wetland birds and 50 species of migratory birds. It also functions as a flood, deter, flood detention area and their uh, vision for the park is releasing the stress of urbanization. 
For both uh, day one and day two, we will have a second segment, which is the Weapons, uh, Weapons Center Festival, where, as I said earlier, the members of the Valley uh, will be able to share their um, updates on their activities and their weapons um, through various forms of presentations. It could be videos, it could be part of presentations, PowerPoint, etc. For day three, it's a group workshop where uh, the members of Welly will come together to uh, brainstorm on ideas on moving forward in areas of cooperation and at the same time also uh, the business meeting for the Welly network. Now for uh, part two, which is going to be an in-person session in uh, March or April 2022, uh, we have roughly sketched the activities for these uh, days. The opening day will have an exhibition, introductory talks, uh, learning sessions, wetland walk, etc. And we will have a field trip and learning sessions on the second day. And this is going to be around uh, Manila Bay. And uh, for day three, we will have learning exchange sessions again, workshops and business meetings of the network. And of course, the closing program. So with that, uh, thank you very much. Um, apologies for the glitch in my presentation. So what you're seeing here now is the Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park, the host wetland for the 8th Valley. And um, and if you can see here, the, this is the uh, website for the conference. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Dari. Thank you, Ms. Amy, for sharing with us uh, important details about the conference. Uh, we are very excited for this upcoming conference in November. So I'm sure you are curious about what Wetland Link International is and what they do. At this point, uh, let me call on Mr. Chris Rostron uh, to tell us about Welly and Wetland Centers. Over to you, Mr. Chris. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. From here in the UK. Um, my name is Chris Rostrin and I am the head of Wetland Link International. Uh, I've been in post now for uh, around 12 years, so I've worked a lot uh, with many uh, member organizations across the world and particularly uh, with uh, Mr. Sur and Songbo from uh, the Ramsar Regional Centre East Asia and with uh, Ms. Amy and her colleagues over many of the Welly Asia conferences in the past. So I'm very pleased uh, to see that Ms. Amy and her team are hosting uh, the next Welly Asia conference, the eighth Welly Asia conference. I'm also really looking forward to coming to see you guys face to face and finally visiting your amazing center and your amazing um, Wetland Park. Uh, and I think the build up to this, the initial virtual meeting will put us in uh, a good preparation state for actually coming to see everybody face to face next year. I'm going to give you a little bit of background on uh, Wetland Link International. I know most of you probably know uh, something about it already. Um, we have a network of around uh, 350 wetland centers worldwide. Um, wetland centers uh, are, are defined quite broadly for us, so they're really any wetland where there is activities going on going on around SEPA and SEPA is the Ramsar acronym uh, for communication, education, participation and awareness. It's this kind of approach I think that is so important in getting people to understand why uh, they should value wetlands, why we why wetlands are important to all of us uh, and it's linked very closely to the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands. This convention uh, has been celebrating its 50th year this year. It's the only convention that focuses on one single habitat, which is wetlands. Although having said that, you know, wetlands are such a diverse range of habitats in themselves that they, de they deserve a convention all to themselves. So they're anything, as you know, um, from rivers, lakes, streams, bogs and marshes, and even coastal areas out to a depth of, of six meters. So it's a huge, 
uh, diverse range of habitats, uh, all all coordinated into one, and it supports an amazing range of wildlife. It's one of the most biodiverse habitats that there is. The other thing that's recently coming up is it's also one of the most important habitats for storing carbon. We have uh, the next uh, conference of the parties for the UNFCCC, so the Convention on Climate Change, which is taking place in the UK uh, next month, no, in the next couple of months in November. So this is really high in our minds at the moment about how wetlands are, are storing carbon, how wetlands are really needing to be recognized for this role. In some cases, wetlands are storing up to three times more carbon than forests. So although everyone has to date focused a lot on forests and tree planting, we should also recognize that things like coastal zones and mangroves are incredible stores uh, for, for carbon, are managing to lock that carbon away and play their role in terms of uh, combating climate change. So they're both doing that by storing the carbon, but also by mitigating um, and helping to stop things like storm surges uh, and extreme weather events. So we're all really aware at the moment, particularly in the UK, but globally, of how wetlands need to be brought up the agenda in terms of their importance for, for climate change and carbon storage. So uh, for the other things that uh, Miss Amy mentioned, this theme about healing with wetlands, this again is something we've done a lot of work on through our wetland centers in the UK. We have nine wetland centers that we run, and we've done a lot of work looking at the impacts of being in a wetland um, for mental health particularly, but also for physical health. So we see this as a very um, topical theme. It's a very useful theme. Um, and people really do, I think, understand that being in nature, being in wetlands is something that can really support you, both in terms of your physical health, for getting out, um, taking exercise and recreation, but also for mental health in terms of getting in touch with nature, being in a relaxing place. And we can show now uh, through work that we've done that these have actual impacts and this has been studied. And we hope to share this with you, hopefully, um, at the at the Welly 8th uh, Asia Wetland Conference. So for what else we're doing then, um, we'd like to share a little bit about what's happening across uh, the network. I'll leave the Welly Asia uh, stuff to, to Songbo to talk about because the Ramsar Regional Center East Asia are the leads for us on uh, Welly Asia, um, working closely with us at, at Welly Global. Um, Two things that uh, we'd like to uh, mention. One is that we are having a series of webinars. Uh, these are global webinars uh, and they're based around language. So we were having a uh, webinar for uh, the English language speaking community across our network and that will be taking place on uh, the 26th of October. So slightly in advance of the Welly Asia conference, and we are inviting everybody, including partners in Welly Asia, to join on that. And we'll send out some more details soon. But that's really an opportunity to bring together everybody across our global network to talk about what they're doing at wetland centers and to share best practice uh, in terms of their, their work on the ground. So we hope that some of you will be able to attend that. The other thing that we are going to launch shortly and that we've been working very closely with uh, Amy, Ms. Amy and the team, as well as uh, Mr. Su and Songbo at the Ramsar Regional Center East Asia is the Star Wetland Center uh, accreditation scheme. So this is going to be uh, an opportunity for people to recognize their wetland centers for the good practice they're doing. It will be like a, a, a branding, I guess, for wetland centers. People will have to apply for it and show uh, to demonstrate what they are uh, delivering at the wetland center. And then the best ones will award will get awarded this uh, star award. Uh, and this will really allow us uh, to recognize and give people um, an opportunity to showcase what they're doing at their wetlands. So we hope that this uh, new star award system will be something that uh, we see many applicants for across the Welly Asia system. Uh, it will be a pilot scheme this year and then launched, uh, we hope, at the Ramsar Conference of the Parties next year. So there are lots of things going on across the network. Um, we're very excited uh, to see things that are happening across uh, the Welly Asia uh, network. And we're really looking forward to playing an active role both uh, in the virtual meeting this year, but hopefully also in the face-to-face -face meeting next year. So thank you very much, very much, uh, everybody, uh, for your time. Uh, if there's any questions at the end, we'd be very happy to take them. Um, but I'll pass you back uh, to Darry. Thank you very much.
Um, thank you, Mr. Chris, for introducing the Wetland Link International and its interesting work, especially on wetland centers. So from the UK, we now move over to Asia to share with us about Wally Asia and how organizations can apply to be a member of the network. So let us give the floor to Ms. Songbo Kim from the Ramsar Regional Center, is Asia. Ms. Songbo, please. It is still very low and there is some feedback. Yes, Miss Songbo, thank you. Yeah, so are we uh, sorry for the uh, inconvenience and are we uh, move on for <laughs> introducing the uh, what is really Asia? So again, uh, the really Asia is a networking platform uh, for development centers or organizations uh, that uh, facilitating the wellness education and SIPA activities in one or more uh, multiple wellness in Asia region uh, under the really Global. So this network is a membership basis and members communicate, share information and experience through the network activities. So currently we have uh, 53 members from 12 countries in Asia. So then maybe you will be curious that how you can become a member of Willy Asia. Uh, it's very simple. So to join Willy Asia Network, uh, you may submit the completed application form to us by email. So the application form would be very simple, but uh, it, it requests uh, essential information about your wellness center or organization including the SIPA and educational program that you are facilitating. Um, and well, aside from the application form, I, I assume that you may wonder uh, whether you have to have an actual building of, of wellness center. Uh, the answer is no, not necessarily. So if you are um, an organization, facilitating and providing wellland education regularly in a specific wellland, then you can join. Um, even if you are at the stage of, of building a wellland center or developing a plan for establishing a center, also you can join the network. So actually we already have some members who joined us when they were at the uh, uh, planning stage. Uh, uh, 
uh, of uh, developing a plan for uh, to build a wonder center. So the important thing here is uh, your active participation uh, to the network when you join uh, the network. And and then I think you may be uh, curious about what will be the benefits of being mm -hmm. a member. Uh, I can answer that as the Willy a, uh, Willy is a global network and under the umbrella of Willy and Willy Asia, uh, you will be acknowledged internationally and also be promoted uh, globally through the network. Of course, uh, on top of that, uh, as it is a practical network, uh, you will have opportunity for uh, capacity building and sharing experience and knowledge on facilitating wellness education and managing wellness and wellness center. So you will experience these benefits through our Willy Asia activities, uh, like Willy Asia conference, Willy Asia study basic grant uh, project, and also Willy Asia fund that uh, we are facilitating to our members. So uh, as uh, Amy, Miss Amy mentioned, uh, the eighth Willy Asia conference is uh, will be held on November. So uh, you will experience the benefits of being a uh, Willy Asia member soon. So that is all from me. Uh, Daria, thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Song Booking for Kim for those information. So the invitation is out there for wetlands to consider apply, applying for membership to Wellly Asia. So now to talk about our very own wetland center and the host wetland for the eighth Wally Asia conference, the Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park. Please welcome the OIC of the protected area. The OIC Protected Area Superintendent, Ms. Elaine Marie Miranda. So good afternoon, Ms. Elaine. Hi, good afternoon. Ms. Elaine, um, can you tell us about the Lagopinias Parinacos the Wetland Park and why it is an important book for the wetland? Yeah, sure. I'm very much honored to to discuss LPPWP to you guys. So the Las Piñas Parañaque Wetland Park or LPPWP is a coastal wetland situated in the urban area. It is the first established critical habitat in the Philippines to highlight the need to protect the threatened species of birds such as the endemic Philippine duck and the Chinese egret. So uh, a year after that, uh, after its establishment as a critical habitat, another proclamation or a presidential proclamation was issued, expanding its coverage to protect important habitats in the area, such as the lagoons, the mudflats, mangroves, and other wetland ecosystems. So while most of the developed countries have already preserved their urban wetlands due to the numerous ecological services they provide, it is increasingly hard to see one in an urban setting, especially here in the Philippines. So we are very lucky to have one and to be able to manage it. So LPPWP is an important wetland because of its intrinsic features, which enhance its ecological value. It is also a designated Ramsar site or wetland of international importance mainly because records from 2007 to 2011 show that the site supports at least 1% of the estimated population of the black wing stilts. And also, this urban wetland has an estimated 36 hectares of mangroves composed of 23 species. It has an extensive mud plots that serve as feeding grounds for migratory birds while also providing sustenance to local communities with the mollusks and other fishery products found around its waters. Uh, the wetland itself is a nature laboratory supported by the educational facilities like the Wetland Center that supports programs. Tourism is offered by its very nature and enriched by bird watching and nature walks or nature prep. So the scenic land and seascape highlighted by the famous Manila Bay provide an aesthetic value, the cultural as well as spiritual 
values making this an important wetland truly a jewel in an urban setting. Um, I think you miss any. Um, I'm thinking about how will the PWP and other wetlands in the country benefit from this event? Ah, yeah. So, well, aside from we get to meet new people and establish network from across the globe, this event is an opportunity to learn from the network's experience and, of course, to learn about how to manage wetlands and wetland centers. Also, this event is of great help because you can get to learn about business models on how to operate a wetland center, learn about ecotourism products that are successful in other wetlands, and this event also can help the LPWP enhance the software aspect or its setup program. Thank you, Ms. Aline. And lastly, what do you think as the host wetland? How is the LPWP supporting this event? Yes, uh, Ms. Dari, we are in full support to this event by offering, of course, the venue, the wetland, and its facilities as the host wetland come March 2022. God bless. Also, with the other members of the Protected Area Management Board, we will be co-sponsoring the hosting of the in-person conference next year. And also, we will assist in the coordination, uh, conduct, and contribute the cost in the implementation of this activity. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Ms. Aline, and I am very excited for the upcoming Willie Asia Conference. So thank you again, Ms. Aline, and to all our guest speakers for the very enlightening uh, sharing session. So before we proceed to our next seg segment, which is the wetland views, we will accommodate some questions, comments, and even additional inputs from our audience for this afternoon. Uh, you may type your questions in comment section of the FB or YouTube channel. So if you have a question to any of our invited guests for today, you feel free to ask. Are there any questions? There is one there. Oh, no. Okay, so there is uh, one question about the payment regarding the upcoming uh, well Asia conference. Are there any payments for, for us to join the conference? Yeah, so uh, from Mr. Cyrus. Okay, so about uh, for, uh, from Ms. Mr. Cyrus Godry Capina, good afternoon. Question to the resource speaker Is there a fee to apply for membership to well Asia? Yeah, so I think I can answer that for uh, Mr. Cyrus. So, no, there is no fee uh, to enter the well Asia network, so it's a free membership. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Song Bukim. So applying for well Asia ah, well Asia membership is for free. So there is a other question or about the conference itself. So is the conference free or are there any payment to, to be able to join the conference? Um, for um can I can answer the for, part for November. <laughs> okay. Yes, so for November it's going to be a virtual conference. So uh, there will be no conference fee. That's why we are encouraging. Um, we're encouraging a lot of the wetland advocates to uh, register for the virtual conference in November. Okay. So, are there any other questions from the audience? Or maybe if uh, any of the panelists would like to add to whatever was already discussed. Ms. Elaine, um, for example, in in the LPPWP, yeah, um, I know that we are still completing uh, <laughs> completing the wetland center strata. So, uh, do you think it will it will be ready by March of next year? Uh, yes, actually, Miss Ami, uh, we are hoping before the year ends 
it's completely finished so that by next year it's fully operational of course so we can we can be together there by march so yeah i'm hoping we are hoping actually yeah that's good and um so we can take them around uh, Manila, Manila Bay and visit some yeah. of the islands around Manila Bay. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, uh, especially um, we are also uh, actually starting a project in Habebe, Pampanga. It's going to be a 10 hectare mangrove rehabilitation. It's still within Manila Bay. So I think that's one of the places that we can visit during the conference next year for the field for the field basin. Okay, so anything else that you would like to share, Chris? There is uh, um, another question here. I'm sorry. Go for it, Terry, after you, after you. Yeah, okay, so there is another question here. Um, if the, uh, from uh, Sir Celestino Ole, so if the pandemic continues, will the Wally event next year still be face-to-face -face or online? We would like to answer that question we will have to play it by ear <laughs> the intention is to have it actually uh face to face in person by next year um that's why we are moving it to at the latest april so hopefully we can meet in person but uh, of course everything will depend on how the situation will be around uh, first quarter of next year There's another. Yeah, another question here. What can participants hope to see on the field trip day? That's okay, I guess um, <laughs> Elaine, Elaine can help me with that. Elaine can probably describe uh, what we can see at the LPPWP, and I can just, uh, you know, yeah. add to what she's going to, to say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, aside from you get to see beautiful people and, you know, start workers there and get to meet new friends with people, uh, you will experience a uh, nature check. You can do uh, photography, wild bird photography. Uh, you can see the, the vast 36 hectare mangrove forest with, with more than 20 species of it. And also, um, you can see. Uh, Stations. You can get to do to ride a boat uh, to at least uh, like tour within the boundaries or the shoreline of the wetland park. Yeah, and uh, we are actually planning on um, we are still raising funds for this, but the plan is we will take you on a cruise around Manila Bay. Yeah, it's going to be a cruise. We're going to go into some of the more interesting places in Manila Bay, including Corregidor. Corregidor Island is a historical island. Uh, we will see there uh, relics of World, of, uh, World War II and uh, how Manila was defended from that from that point of view. So it's going to be uh, really very exciting. It won't just be a uh, it won't just be uh, um, an a biological thing but in fact we will have some sort of history we will see part part of manila uh, the historic manila and um and also the the ecosystem part of the of the field trip thank you miss amy and miss Annie. i think i interrupted mr chris a while ago so mr chris do you want to share something Thank you, Dari. Yeah, um, I, I just wanted to say that these uh, Welly Asia Conference are really important for people to get together and get inspiration from each other. Um, for the last uh, seven that we've had, you know, the most important things are really people learning face to face what they're doing and visiting some of the host weapons and what they're achieving on their own sites. So I really thoroughly recommend uh, people to apply for this. And I'm also recommending that the, the virtual sessions are also very useful these days. Um, although COVID has meant that we've had to have more virtual meetings, it has actually meant that more people can join these things. It's not exactly the same as face to face, but it makes it a lot easier in, in terms of travel or your carbon footprint or your time 
to actually join up virtually and find out uh, what people are doing in that way. So I would really say, you know, great uh, to Mazemi and the team that you're so good at doing these virtual meetings. You know, the, the news and views uh, setup is really excellent. You know, I'm thoroughly uh, congratulate you on these things because they're a great way of bringing people together and helping us to, to maintain that contact. So. Um, if there's anything else we can do, let me know. Um, recently, I took part in the IUCN conference, but virtually, and there were some great opportunities there for people to share experience and do networking and get together. So um, looking forward to a really productive uh, and positive virtual meeting, um, but really looking forward to coming uh, and seeing your site. It sounds amazing um, sometime next year. So fingers crossed uh, that next year, we will all be able to see each other face to face. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And so on that on that note, also, um, I think I would just like to ask Songbo if uh, she can uh, tell us where where to find the application form, or if you would like to join uh, Valley Asia. Yeah. Thank you, Amy. So uh, you can download the application form uh, in our website rrcaa.org, or you can uh, can email me. So I think uh, the organizer can share my email address with participants when you have the list of participants. So yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, that's really great. And um, for those who would want to apply, if you need help in filling out the form, you can email us at uh, SCPW. We can help out. We can help out. Uh, and also we have a design. We have a design team that also designs Western centers. If you need help, you can also help. Okay. So I guess over to you, Dari. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, everyone. In the interest of time, I think um, we have no open forum. But before we go to the next segment, I think we need to have group picture, group picture first with Sir Sales. I'm sorry, I I forgot it. Can we have a group picture first? Sir Celis, can you show us your video so, so that we can have a group picture? Okay. Okay, so one, two, three. Thank you everyone for your inputs. Uh, if you still have questions, you can still comment on our uh, comment section of YouTube and Facebook channel. and. Just put your email so that uh, we can revert back to you. If uh, and we will send, we will be forwarding your question to our director. And afterwards, we will email the answer to you. So um, thank you everyone for staying up to this point in our uh, wetland news segment. We learned about the details of the forthcoming conference about the Welly and Welly Asia and how to be a member of the Welly Asia network. We also had a glimpse of the host wetland the LPPWP. Towards the end of the show, uh, we will open the registration for participants to the conference. And now we will now be going to the wetland view segment of this afternoon program. We will feature two wetlands in an, in an urban setting with a very successful SIPA program that complements the wetland center complex. So ladies and gentlemen, the two featured videos today are about the Hong Kong Wetland Center and the Sungai Bolo Wetland Reserve in Singapore. Let us enjoy the view. A new attraction for visitors, the Hong Kong Wetland Park. A celebration of wetlands all around the world and a wonderful opportunity to learn more about Hong Kong's own special wetland habitats. This is a vital new initiative, which has captured the imagination of architects, designers and conservationists. Together they have built a world-class conservation, education and eco-tourism centre. Here in the 61 hectare park, you will find some of Hong Kong's rarest and most fascinating creatures. Here you can discover the wonder of wetlands and learn how all life on Earth is intimately bound to these magnificent habitats. The 
Hong Kong Wetland Park is yours to enjoy. To learn more about the amazing habitats that keep our world alive. To learn about the threats which they face. And to learn what you can do in your own community to protect and enjoy the natural beauty of wetlands. Visit a wetland and you'll discover much more than you could ever imagine. Hi, I'm Kairi and I'm here at the Wetland Centre located within the Sungai Bulu Wetland Reserve, Singapore's first ASEAN Heritage Park. Sungai Bulu Wetland Reserve is a great example of how our ecosystems contribute to a high quality living environment with cleaner air and water which benefits the well-being of Singaporeans here in our city in nature. Today, we'll be exploring the Migratory Bird Trail. Let's go! Now, we are here on the main bridge which crosses Sungai Bulogosa. There are many animals you can spot here like the oriental whip snake, herons, egrets and the white-breasted water hen or if you're lucky, an estuarine crocodile. Can you see the mangrove tree roots along the riverbank? Malayan water monitor lizards can sometimes be seen here basking in the sun. While they might look intimidating, they are actually quite shy and will scurry away when humans approach. The smooth-coated otters have also been spotted playing on the river bank and hunting for fish nearby. Just a few steps away, you'll find the largest hide in the reserve with two-storey sitting. It is a good place to observe the migratory shorebirds during high tide. Every year, thousands of migratory birds arrive at the reserve from August to September from the breeding grounds in Russia and China. The reserve is an important wintering and stopover site along the East Asian Australasian Flyway. Some stop here to rest before flying on to Indonesia and Australia to escape the cold winter months while others stay on till April before they journey back to their breeding grounds in the Northern Hemisphere. Can you spot the common ridgeshank? It is one of the birds that make the reserve their home during the winter. We are now on the banks of Sungai Bilabong Bulo, facing Pulau Bulo. Pulau Bulo is isolated from the rest of the reserve, providing animals with a quiet place for refuge. You may spot a white-bellied fish eagle here, fishing for its prey. Take a look at the special roots of the mangrove. Another strategy that the mangroves adopt to cope with the harsh saltwater environment is by germinating seeds while still attached to the parent plant. These are known as propagules. Mangroves are important to our ecosystem as they protect the coastlines from sea waves, maintain good water quality for our coastal habitats, and provide food and habitat for fishes. If you have the time, stop by Hai Puan Si, a quiet spot that provides an undisturbed view of the shorebirds. Here, you can get a closer look at the Nipah Palm, also known as the Mangrove Palm, as well as its flowers and fruits. For a bird's eye view of the reserve, Johor and the surrounding coastlines of northern Singapore, head up the 18-meter-high Airy Tower. Enjoy the breeze and look out for the egrets that call the wetlands home. We've come to the end of our tour at Sungai Bulu Wetland Reserve. We hope to see you here soon. Bye!
that's it for our wetland view segment and now for to close the event and to announce the opening of the general registration to the conference may i may i call on the president of scpw mr celestino b ulet Thank you, Dari. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Society for the Conservation of Philippine Wetlands, I would like to thank you all for your continued support to this wetland news, wetland views, an online platform of sharing developments about wetland conservation. For this particular episode, we were given an overview of the upcoming eighth WLI Asia Conference and learn more about WLI, WLI Asia Network in our very own Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park. To our guests today, particularly uh, our Executive Director for the Society, Ms. Amy Lecciones, Mr. Chris Rostrom, uh, Head of the WLI and Wildlife Trust in London, UK, Ms. Songu, Songu Kim, Network Officer of the Ramsar Regional Center, East Asia, and Ms. Elaine Marie Miranda, who is the OIC Park Superintendent of the Las Piñas Parañaque Wetland Park. Thank you all for giving your time and expertise to our event this afternoon. We learned a lot from you and what you have shared with us is very, very enlightening. Again, we are honored that the Society for the Conservation of Philippine Wetlands will be hosting the forthcoming 8th Wetlands Link International Asia Conference with the theme, Healing with Nature, Wetlands and Wetland Centers in Focus. I would like to invite you all to this conference and learn more about the benefits of wetland ecosystems to human health and the role of wetland centers in promoting health and well-being of people. Before I close this session, I'm happy to announce that we will be opening the general registration for the participants who are intending to attend the virtual conference in November. We will flash the link on the screen and also post it on our website, the WLI Asia Conference website and the SCPW website as well. Thank you again, and we hope to see you at the 8th WLI Asia Conference. Stay safe and good afternoon.